Right, just a quick one today, guys. I was trying to do a video earlier on in the day comparing this Eftic Balkan steel to the Eggington Square, two of my favorite honing steels. And I compared them on a variety of different steels at different hardnesses. Uh, we best tested them, cut a few different types of media, but turns out the GoPro doesn't work in the Australian summer. So I had this thing on my chest for maybe 10 minutes and it shut down that was in the shade i didn't think it was overly hot uh tried again an hour later same thing so it looks like the new gopro 12 can't film in the shade uh unless it's morning or once the sun starts going down so i sat there talking to myself not realizing the camera was off um now i've pretty well I've gone through, I had a bunch of used knives that were planned out for the video. The problem is I've already gone and honed a lot of them. So that video is out the window. Now what we're going to do, all this will be another video. For now we're just going to talk about the FTIC Balkan. What I like about it, what I don't like about it. And um, whether or not I recommend it if you're looking at picking up a more premium steel. You know a lot of your butcher packs will come with a cheap coarse cut steel. That's fine if your knives are real scabby farm knives or if they've been neglected for a long time. But if you run any sort of decent edge on your knife, you'll notice the coarse cut steels do nothing but tear them up. So you're looking for a decent medium to fine to polished steel. And in my opinion, these two are the best. Maybe you're weighing up between them. Right now, we're going to talk about this one here. So this is the German made Eftic. I believe it's made in Solonian where they make all their other cutlery. And we're going to be using this knife here as a demonstration. This is a little Kiwi knife. Some people call them Thai chef knives because they're made in Thailand. On another note, these are probably the best value for money knife you can get. You get them for a couple of bucks. 420J steel, so nothing to brag about in terms of edge retention. Really the only thing it's got going for it is corrosion resistance. But because it is so soft, it does respond to a steel really well. So something like this CPM 20 CV, this is a little fella that I made, great knife, holds an edge for ages, but when it comes time to hone it, even though you don't need to hone it often, um, you're going to use ceramic or diamonds, all you're going to do on these traditional steels is wear out your cuts. So you might get a little bit of a response, but it's, it's next to nothing, these really are made for older carbon steel knives and soft stainless like Cycuts, Victorinox, Wustoffs, these Kiwis, Dexter Russells, that sort of thing. That's where you're going to be wanting to use one of these honing steels. Anyway, enough flapping my gums about that. Let's have a look where this Kiwi knife is now. Now this thing's just been banging around in the kitchen. It's been on and off of a steel. Um, I think I've loaned it out to a few people too while I was sharpening their knives. It'll definitely be in need of a hone, but how much? 296 is actually not too bad. I expected worse than that. Um, I could go and be in a damage edge. I could test this six different times and get six different readings. We're only testing about 0.2 of a mil at a time. Now on a fresh uniform edge, that's gonna be fairly consistent from the tip to the heel, as long as you know what you're doing. But when you've got an old used edge with little dings and chips and stuff, you can get unlucky. Every now and then you can land on a burr that's extremely sharp, or you might land on the inside of a chip that's extremely dull. But 300, that's dull enough that we'd want to hit it on a hone. So we'll give it a light hone on this new Eftic. We'll see what it comes up at. First of all, if, we'll see if she slices paper. 300, it... So you can see what I'm talking about. Some bits will push cut the paper. Other bits won't even start on the paper overall pretty scabby edge really hard to start that cut what I might do just out of curiosity you'll probably find if we test the heel of that knife it'll come up almost double that number so the higher the number the duller the knife still not as dull as I'd thought usually I can get him to slice paper you know mid 200s which just goes to show you 
that the paper slicing test is not an ideal test for seeing if your knife is sharp. It's more not so much a case of if it slices the paper, but how it slices the paper. So we'll call it 300. 300 and it's shit, it's slicing paper. The thing I like about these broad flat steels, is it makes it very easy to make a start and maintain a good angle. It'd be a little bit more careful with the tapered cylindrical or square steels. This one just gives you a large area where you can slap your knuckle down and sort of slow down so you're not whacking the knife down and find your angle. But also it makes it a little bit easier to hit the heel of the knife. Now we're not looking for any miracles. This is honing steel after all, but we should see that it bounces back to a point where it can easily slice through the paper and maybe we can get that reading down to 220, 200, something like that. Now it should be worth mentioning, these steels aren't cheap. About twice the price of the Eggington. So these are about, not twice the price, I mean if you buy them wholesale, twice the price. These steels retail for around 165 in Australia. So quite a pricey tool to have in the kitchen. Um, I love this thing. It is my favourite steel, but it is not as good as the Eggington we'll be looking at next time. I'm spewing the first video got scrapped because I did a really nice comparison between these two. But the thing that's wrong with these is... I don't know how well you can see this on the GoPro, but there's all these gouges that are a lot bigger than the standard fine cut that FDIC usually runs. To me, it looks like contaminants, possibly part of the tool they use for the gouges has chipped away and got caught in there. But there's some scoring in there that is way bigger than the standard fine cut. We may not notice it, just honing knives like this. But, um, you know, for, for, for the money, you would expect more given that something like this Eggington that's made in Sheffield is, you can check this with a microscope from down here right to the tip and it's absolutely perfect. The F-Dick kind of looks like a child made it. Even if you look at all this finishing here, there's not one thing on it that's symmetrical. Looks like someone's done this with their teeth. There's big burrs all over it. Very cheap um, fit and finish. Beautiful steel to use. But the, fish, the fit and finish compared to these Sheffield Eggingtons is night and day. The thing I do like about this is because it doesn't have an injection molded handle on it, packs down really nice and flat in the canvas wrap so you don't even know it's there whereas these ones they sort of stick out a bit and add a bit of bulk to what you're carrying around let's go a few more light swipes check it on the paper first There we go, look at that. Now if we test that at the right spot, I reckon we could have got that down to around 220, 230 hopefully. Possibly a bit lower in some spots, possibly higher in others. It's usually nice when you're testing a used edge. Do three or four tests and get an average. to 85 feels a bit sharper than that so we'll test another area go a bit further up to 40 that's somewhere where I'd expect it to be coming straight off this. Now if this was a half decent edge to start with, 
you'd be able to maintain it on this steel very easily and keep it extremely sharp. You should be able to keep a shaving edge on your knife with one of these medium fines or standard fine f dicks The Eggington goes a bit further than that with their satin or a polish, even the f dick polish. Um, but you've got to have that good edge there to start with. Anyway, I don't want to make this too long in case a GoPro decides to overheat again. But um, the f dick steel, if you're looking at it, I do recommend it. Um, so long as you know what you're buying, you're not going to get you're not going to get some sort of nice craftsmanship for the money for 165 you'll find some some websites you can get them wholesale but you get hit on the postage so if you do want to save a buck maybe see if you've got a mate or two that wants to go in with you you might get that price down a bit f dick i do recommend it it's not as nice as the eggington but um it is my favorite honing steel when it comes to steels not sure i've got a few other nice ceramic and diamond ones that i prefer over this but just for plain old steels for cheap soft knives this one's a winner all right thanks for watching if you enjoyed that uh do subscribe because i will that one video i tried to film before i'll break up into three videos so i don't run into this problem again we'll be talking about this we'll also be covering ceramic diamonds and um how to use steels if you're a beginner all right take it easy